In this session, we're going to talk about DNS server caching. The client makes a request to the DNS server for a particular website address. The DNS server will search its cache or its local database to see if it has the answer for that website. If it doesn't, it is going to send that request to the internet and it's going to look for a DNS server on the internet that is authoritative for that particular domain. Once the answer is found, that answer is returned to the DNS server and the DNS server in turn returns the answer to the client computer. However, the DNS server also keeps a copy of that information. That would be the website name and the IP address in its local cache. The next time that that client requests the resolution of that particular website, the DNS server does not have to go on the internet to search for that answer because the DNS server already has that IP address and the website address in its cache. That means that whenever you have a site that you go on very often, chances are that the resolution is very quick. You see, when you click on that address, it comes up a lot faster than if you have gone on the site for the very first time. So any name that you commonly access will resolve quickly because the server has that information already in its cache. Whereas the names in a domain that you don't normally access will take a bit longer. So caching then is a vital part of the DNS process because it reduces the number of requests sent to the root name servers on the internet. The amount of time that DNS data remains cached on a server is called its time to live, TTL. Unlike most data caches, the TTL is not specified by the administrator of the server where the cache is stored. Instead, the administrators of each authoritative DNS server specify how long the data for that resource records in their domain or zones should be retained in the servers where it is cached. Now, this enables administrators to specify a time to live value based on the volatility of their server data. On a network where changes in IP addresses, or perhaps the addition of new resource records is frequent, you want to put a lower time to live value. And this increases the likelihood that clients will receive current data. But on a network that rarely changes, rarely, rarely changes, you have that same data most of the time, a longer TTL value minimizes the number of requests sent to the parent server of your domain or zone. Now we want to take a look at how we will modify that TTL value for a zone on a Windows Server 2012 R2 DNS server to modify the time to live record we have to access dns so we click on tools dns and we want to expand the forward lookup zone and here we have the contoso zone let's click on it and expand it then we want to right click on the contoso zone and click on properties 
The tab that we want is a start of authority, the SOA. So we click on that. And we see here we have minimum default time to live at one hour. And that is the default. Remember, on a network where changes in IP addresses or perhaps the addition of a new resource record is frequent, a lower time to live value will increase the likelihood that clients will receive current data. But on a network that rarely changes, a longer TTL value will minimize the number of requests sent to the parent server of your domain or zone. So you can decide if you want to make the change, you would click on the down arrow here, and you can put seconds, minutes, and you can change the time but the default is an hour. So that's how we would modify the time to live for the data that is cached. This is the end of our session on DNS caching, and I want to thank you for listening.